Hello, my name is Mark Pimto. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with the turn module within CAMWorks or SOLIDWORKS CAM. So everything we're going to see in this video applies to both SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWorks, but going forward, I'll just refer to it as CAMWorks. So to load your CAMWorks inside of SOLIDWORKS, what you want to do is go up to the top center of your screen to this gear symbol, and to the right of it, there's an arrow. And in that arrow, you'll see your add-ins menu. Within the add-ins menu, you'll see all the add-ins or side programs associated with your install of SOLIDWORKS. And if you scroll down, you'll see your CAMWORKS and your SOLIDWORKS CAM in those lists. To the left of it, if you click on that checkbox, it loads the add-in for use in this one CAM part file. But if you'd like the add-in to be loaded every time you open up your SOLIDWORKS, click on the checkbox to the right, and that will load it on startup. Now that we have CAMWorks loaded, we can start programming our part. Now you could do any of the things we're about to see from the ribbon. You can see there's a CAMWorks tab in the ribbon, or you could do it in the side menu. Most of what I'm going to do in this video is in the side menu. And in the side menu, you can see we have our CAMWorks feature tree tab. The feature tree is where all the features on this part, things that we're going to turn on this, on this lathe, will be found, collected either by the automatic feature recognition or added by you as the programmer interactively or manually. And these are the features that will be used to program the operations, which can be found in the operation tree. Again, in this tree, we will see all the operations either automatically applied by the software or automatically or interactively generated by you as the programmer. All the tooling used in those operations can be found in the final tab called the Tools tree. This is a list of tools currently in use in this operation file. If we jump back to the feature tree, we could get started with the setting up of our part. Now, everything in the part file is dictated by the SOLIDWORKS unit of measure. So in the bottom right corner, just confirm you're working in the units that you'd like to work in. In this video, I'll be working with inch units, but if you want to work in metric, you can change it to MMGS, and then all your fees and speeds and all your values in terms of offsets will be in millimeters. Back to the top left corner, if we double click on machine, we can see a list of machines uh, by default with the software. Now these are for training and trial purposes. As you go forward, it's best to add your own machine definition so that you inform the software of the maximum spindle speed and feed rate of your machine and the maximum travel of your machine. But for the purpose of this video, I'll use the default single turret lathe. As soon as you select that machine definition, it loads a tool crib or a list of tools that we will be using on this particular machine, as well as the post processor for use with this machine. Now, if you have your own custom made post, it should appear in this list. And if it doesn't automatically get selected, you can click on it and then click select. If we jump to the setup tab, we can now set up our work offset. First, we'll give it a coordinate system. So we go into user defined. The coordinate system requires two bits of information, the origin and the axis directions. The origin can be created by these three options. The first is entity. That allows us to choose either a planar circle, so we can find the center of that plane in that circle, or we can choose a sketch point. Part vertex opens up these nodes you see on screen here, which allows us to choose either the front face, the back face, or dead middle of the part. Stock vertex works in a similar way. It just has the front face and the back face of the stock for our origins. And typically, this is one that I will use because I usually touch off on the front face of the stock. So by using the stock vertex, I'm assigning the origin to the front face of whatever my stock definition is. By default, the software knows that this is going to go on the lathe, so the z-axis is my rotary axis. Likewise, the x-axis is pointing radially, so this is already set up. But if, for whatever reason, you're working with a part that is not coming in correctly, you have control over the axis directions also in the left menu. If everything on screen looks correct, we can click on the green check mark to confirm that. To assign a work offset, we'll go to work offset. We'll tell it to use a work coordinate of G54. All the features that are going to be found on this part, whether automatically or manually, will be recognized from the XZ plane. Now that's what's, what I have chosen here. It is the default. But if for whatever reason you needed to change the plane, 
You can either select a different entity, or you can change the angle off the XZ plane to find different cross sections of your part. If we jump to the fixture definition, this gives us the ability to define our fixturing or our jaws, either by using the standard ones from this default list, or you can use a SOLIDWORKS model or an STL file of your work holding of your JAWS setup. If everything on screen here looks correct, we can click the green check mark. Now let's take a look at our stock definition. So if you double click on stock manager, first thing you can do is choose your type of material. Now the type of material will tell the software what fees and speeds, what tooling, what operations to apply to your part file. If you don't see your material on this list, you can add your material with those fees and speeds, with those operations to the internal database. Because of our integration within SOLIDWORKS, we have certain functionality to define the shape of our stock. Now the easiest one, the more common one to use, is the bar stock. With this definition, we can give it the size of the bar stock. We can even place our part within that bar stock with these incremental values. So for instance, the size of the stock, I want to increase it on the front face by 10 thou. And on the back face, I'm going to add two inches of material for holding. The actual diameter of the bar stock, it's an odd shape. I'm going to just change that to a roundup number that's more in line with the standard stock size I probably get. And you can see that updates it on my part. I can now click on the green check mark. Because I defined my coordinate system on the front face of the stock, and I just changed the stock, the coordinate system wants to update as well. So that's really just what this warning is telling us. I'll click yes, and now we can see that my coordinate system is on that 10 thou face. There are two ways to program your part within SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. The first is automatic feature recognition. This is a way that the software will uh, find the features for you, add the operations from the database, add the tooling from the database, and you can automatically calculate your part. The second way is manually using interactive feature recognition. We're going to go through both processes in this video. The first, automatic, means we're going to go up to the top left corner to extract machinable features and we'll tell the software to find the features on the part for us. You can see in the left menu it's already done that. So the first is a face feature. This will find the front face of the part that we might want to true up in terms of dimensions or straighten up. The OD feature is found from the outside profile of the part as it's revolved around that rotary axis. You'll note that it ignored the external groove that we have on this part. That's because it also found that groove separately. Those will require different operations, so it found them separately on our behalf. And then finally, there's a cutoff feature. This recognizes the back face of the part that we might want to use to define a part-off operation. Given the size of this material, I'm not likely to do a part-off operation, so I'm just going to delete this. So I'll just right click, delete, and because it found that feature for me but I'm declining to use it, it'll leave it in the recycle bin so that it's aware that I've recognized that but declined to use it. So with those features already found, we can now go back to the ribbon and click on generate operation plan. What this will do is it will take the operations uh, allocated to that type of feature, indicated if we go back to the feature tree in these square brackets, and it adds those operations to the operations tree. So if we go back to the operations tree, we can see that for each one of these, it added a rough and a finish pass for both the face and the turn. And for the groove, it added another set of rough and finish using different tools. So to the right of it, those tools have been added to our tool tab on the, on the left menu. You can review the operations, you can modify fees and speeds, you can change the tooling. If everything looks good here, you go back to the top left corner and click on Generate Toolpath. What this will do is it'll take those operations, take that tooling, and calculate the operation so that we can see how they act on the part. You'll make note again that the face rough was not calculated. It remained blue. And the reason being is because each one of these turning toolpaths is a stock recognition toolpath. If there's no material to be turned or to be removed, then the calculation does not happen. In this case, the face rough, I only had 10 thou material on that front face. I was going to leave behind 10 thou material in my roughing, so it did not generate the operation. It did, however, generate the face finish because it's removing that final 10 thou from the front face of my part. If we take a look at the turn rough, it generated a toolpath across the entire part. 
recognizing the stock that needs to be removed. And it stops at the, at the back end of the part because that is the end of that feature. To complete the workflow, we can do a simulation of our toolpath just to see the max travel and if there's any collisions with our part. And then finally, we can post the code by clicking on post process, choosing where we'd like to place our G code. And in this menu, you can step through each line of code as it gets processed. You can play through the entire post process to see the entire line of code, or you can fast track it just by clicking on the double arrows and it just shows the titles of each operation. Once the code is posted, if you'd like to see it in a text editor, included in your SOLIDWORKS CAM and your CAMWORKS is a built-in text editor where you can review the code just by checking that box. And then as soon as you click the green check mark, it opens up the text editor and you can review the code. Now, if there was any other features that were missing from the automatic, you can use the manual way of adding features. So let's add that now to thread this portion of the tool. I'm going to right click on one of my features to insert an operation immediately after. We'll go to turn feature. And in turn feature, it allows you to manually create the features from this list. So you can add an OD feature, an ID feature, three types of grooves, essentially just the shape of the cross section of the groove, a face feature, and a cutoff feature. How those features are being found, you can either do it by a plane selection or revolve section. Basically, the plane section takes a cross section of your part in the XZ plane. The revolve section takes the part, revolves it around the rotary, and gives you that outside profile. So depending on the shape of your part, if you have flats or holes, you can generate a uh, feature that's best for your turning operations. In my case, I'd like to just add a thread to this face here. So I'm going to grab this cross-section line, and that indicates that entire face for turning. That is an OD feature, but the strategy, I'd like to thread that, that part. So by choosing that, all it does is it loads a threading operation. It doesn't know which thread we're using just yet. Now, if this was any other feature, that would be enough. But because this is thread, I'd like to tell it what thread is being used there. So I can now right-click on that OD feature with the thread strategy applied and go to parameters. And in parameters, again, you'll see that it loads just a generic threading operation, but we now have the ability to add a thread from our library. So I'll just go to library. It loads my thread table, and I'm just gonna find the thread for this part. As soon as I load that thread, it populates my thread pitch and my thread depth. I'll click OK on that. Now that I have that operation, because it's a thread, I can get it to automatically add a lot of the additional parameters. If I wanted to do this manually, I would need to select the thread insert as part of that operation and then manually generate my own toolpath. In this case, this particular feature is created manually, but I'm not sure which tool I'd like to use. I can still utilize some of that automation by right-clicking and just saying generate operation plan cross-reference that thread against my internal database, and it loads that tool for me. And then again, I can right-click on that and generate toolpath. Now, if there's something about any of these operations you don't like, you can always double-click on the toolpath and make certain changes. So for instance, in my thread, I'd like to start maybe a half inch earlier, and I'd like to end maybe an eighth of an inch late, and I don't want that chamfer at the end. I already have a recess for my thread. While I'm playing around with these parameters, if I'd like to see what they look like in terms of actual posted code, I can click on Preview, and it updates the toolpath to show me what that looks like. And as I'm working through this, if I don't click OK, I don't save any of these changes. So trial and error is very easy within SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS because of this Preview button. But this looks like it's OK for what I want. I'm going to click OK on that. And then that becomes a calculated toolpath that I can then simulate and post code. If you like what you see in this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, give us a call on the main tech support line found on our website. Thanks for watching.